Arrakis, Dune, Desert Planet. I first read it in the summer of 1968, over three days, and I think it was my first full-length extended novel that I ever read. I sort of worked my way up through short horror stories, short science fiction, Asimov I was a big fan of, and then I found you. I think I was 13 or 14 when I first read Dune, and of course, Dune is much more involved, it's much more articulate, and it's actually much more intelligent than a lot of sci-fi. I have a responsibility to really pay attention to the pronunciations and to do my research and to honor the material. I know, I guess I was saying to you before, in my own family, my cousin and his wife named their first daughter, Aaliyah, after the character in the series. So I have first-hand experience of um, fans of these books who, um, who read them over and over again and really they're a part of their day-to-day -day life. Everything about Dune is this sense of history. I mean, uh, Frank Herbert left such a mark on that portion of the sci-fi community that you want to maintain, even though you're modernizing and bringing modern actors in and modern sensibilities and accent and in reading, there's just this sense of history that you want to capture and keep with you the whole time. Even when we weren't in the studio, when we'd leave the studio and go home that night, I'd find it very hard not to keep you know, talking in the voice because it, it, it kind of lives in you when you're doing these kinds of books, these kinds of classics. I've worked on these Dune books in multiple capacities. The very first Dune, I uh, engineered a great portion of that, and that was a lot of fun because they decided to do that theater style where we had uh, multiple actors at the same time sort of working off each other and playing off each other. The mixer of that first Dune book and uh, many other sci-fi classics is Paul Goodrich and he's a, a real wonder to work with. When you're doing books such as Dune, they're science fiction and everybody who's read it has a picture in their mind about what Dune would be like or what it would sound like and trying to find proper wind sounds and desert sounds is difficult because you want it to be fairly barren but you still want to have something interesting happening below it. Um, also because of the poetry of the book you don't want to overwhelm it with extra sound effects as well so it's a bit of a balancing act when you're dealing with mixing audiobooks and especially something that has such a devoted following as Dune and a lot of preconceived notions. I mean there's been a movie, there's been a TV miniseries and now the audiobook and each one has different requirements as far as how you would want to present it so that the audience can enjoy it in the best way possible. You have to put a different head on to read Dune. You're not just enjoying a sci-fi story, but you're actually taking a language lessons, I mean reading Dune, learning to sort of use the tongue and the mind differently. We got in touch with uh, Brian Herbert and he sat down and this is the most amazing thing. He, uh, when I asked him, did your dad keep any notes? I had no idea. His dad kept copious notes about how to pronounce a lot of these words. Not all of them, but a lot. And he started faxing him over to me. Um, this is my glossary, the Dune glossary. Um, it's got all the various books in here. Uh, this actually was just one page. It was so long ago, I still had a thermal paper fax machine at the time. And suddenly I looked at my fax machine and there were Frank Herbert's notes coming out of it. I, I just felt a, a chill when I got them. Um, it was kind of scary, but I really enjoyed it. It was actually one of the better audiobook experiences I've had. I mean, the language is so different. And we were actually in the studio working with other cast members, and that's not always the case these days. Um, and that really makes a difference, when, especially when you're finding a character like Paul. When you have the other voices to relate to and to connect to, you know that you're all going on the same path. So even if it's not exactly what the audience is used to hearing in their own minds, you're doing something that exists in a world that we've created together. Working with Ewan, you know, we did some of these uh, the, these Fremen scenes. We get feedback. I mean, you get you get input from other actors, which you don't get when it's all you. And when other actors are feeding you, 
your performance grows. You get better because of the people around you, especially when you're working with somebody of, of his caliber. Although I'm just a small part of this series, it, I just feel honored to have been working with the other narrators that I've worked with and to be a part of this really historic recording of this great series.